Hi, welcome back to my perspective. I'm so excited for today's episode. We're going to be talking about finances, saving money, spending money while being in college because budgeting is my best friend. I've been huge into finances since I was pretty young, actually. So I'll kind of share my backstory when it comes to money and my tips and tricks of how I've gotten myself through college and I have saved 25% of my income of this past year and for someone who pays for majority of my own things, I think that's a very big percentage. I When I looked it up on Google, most people don't save that much. So I was really proud of myself and I thought I would share some things I've learned along the way. For my likes and dislikes of the week, my like I automatically know what it is I had so much fun this week doing hobbies my therapist and I talked I think it was honestly this week about how I need to spend more time on my hobbies and less times on things that don't make me necessarily happy instead of focusing on avoiding the things that make me sad add in more time of things that I genuinely enjoy doing So I wrote a running list of all of my favorite hobbies, anything I want to pursue or continue doing. A hobby isn't something you're necessarily going to be the best at, that you're going to make a profession or be, wow, everybody. If you want to pick up surfing and you go to the beach, you're not going to know how to surf and there's going to be people in the water who are upset at you because you're in the way and they're already a really good surfer and you don't know what the heck you're doing. But that's okay. That's what a hobby is. They, somebody, you have to start somewhere. So that person eventually started as a hobby and then eventually they go surfing all the time. Hobbies are so important. I'm a very, a big advocate on hobbies because I think people get so stuck in this. I just went on a rampage here, but I think people get so stuck in just working or school where they forget that we're humans. We need other things to keep us going in life that we genuinely enjoy doing. In my running list of hobbies, this week I played pickleball. I've talked about pickleball so much. I, it's so much fun. Right after I finish playing, I'm not good, but right after I finish playing, I'm so happy and just want to keep playing. And I don't know if it's because of the competitiveness or working with a team. I like how speedy I can get and like my quick my quick reflexes that I don't, I've never really had to use that much. So I think it's an interesting sport for me to do something new to try. I'm also fairly lucky that my school has that free class for me to take because I, I, I played with Max, um, what's it called? Pickleball all of summer. And for a while now we've played. I also went to Target this past week. I found a pickleball set and it's so adorable. I don't know, it's probably not the best quality because it's Target, but it's better than nothing. On Amazon, they can be up to 50, 60, 80 dollars for a pickleball. I think one paddle. So this came with two paddles and two balls, and it's so aesthetically pleasing. I think I already said that, but it's from Magnolia. I'm pretty sure like that little, that line. I'm so excited to play. Now I'm going to be playing in style. Maybe my paddle is heavier and I won't play as well, but you know what? I'll adapt. That's what that's what you do. You adapt. So I'm pretty excited to do that. And I just found out that one of my friends loves playing pickleball. So how freaking exciting is that? That now I have a friend to go play with and my roommate took the class with me so we can all play together and we just need one more partner. I went to adult gym, which is basically just open gym for adults at my work and I get to go for free. So even better. And I was so surprised for how much muscle memory I still have. I think it's been five years, maybe six since I retired gymnastics. I went up on the high beam, so freaking scary. And I was able to do a perfect full turn. And then on floor, I was able to do my beam series, like just on the line, a back, a standing back tuck, my floor leap series. And then into the pit, I did a round off full, which I used to be terrified of. And I figured out the correction of why I couldn't. And then I also was still able to do a kip on bars, back handspring, back handspring on the tumble track. So I was blown away by the skills I still continuously have five, six years later and with good form. Don't forget that. Not only can I do the skill, but it looks pretty decent. A part of me wonders if I stop too early, you know? And then another part of me is 
so excited to maybe keep doing adult gymnastics and maybe learning a new skill or overcoming a fear I once had when I was younger. So that was really exciting and they have it twice a week. So I think I'm going to try to go once a week or every other week if that. If I work before, it's much easier for me to just show up. And then my dislike of the week is... Honestly, I've had a very good week, so it was hard to find a dislike, but I did notice that I was feeling pretty, especially with last week's episode, I was feeling not really motivated, not motivated, but feeling bleh in my own body. And I felt very unproductive in the gym because I haven't really been lifting weights or doing any hardcore workouts. And that's usually the later phase of my cycle anyways, But my luteal phase is the longest part of my cycle. So I think that's why I usually get in kind of a rut. And then I'm on my menstrual cycle, which I don't work out. So it's kind of a long period where I'm not working out and I feel very unproductive. And I know I shouldn't because my body needs to rest, but it's kind of how my brain is wired, unfortunately. But then I realized that I got a notification on my Apple Watch saying that I worked out 19 out of, I think probably like 26 days or something which is a decent amount so then I realized that I was I was working out but I just didn't feel like the workouts were productive because there are mostly walks or yoga or maybe something more low-key when I really was working hard and I was being a bit hard on myself that was my dislike of the week because I had a negative mindset about how I look because I wasn't working out and I know like I shouldn't care but that's just how I was feeling and really it was just my mind playing tricks on me it really wasn't true very good day today I went I had work and then I went to the beach and hung out with some friends and I'm really excited tomorrow because I'm recording this Saturday night and I plan on sleeping in on Sunday taking me so on a walk and then going to a, a coffee shop to edit the podcast I usually feel guilty leaving me so when I can definitely do something at home even going to the gym sometimes I feel bad because I can do an at-home workout which I have been doing recently because then he can be roaming and I'm with him you know so I might just like I really want to get into this episode because or when I didn't release my podcast when I first was recording episodes two years ago one of the first episodes was about budgeting because I've always loved it and I thought I wanted to go into finances for the longest time so finally we are here talking about finances I just want to preface, I'm not a business major and you know me, I'm just a 20 year old in college. So this is just what's worked for me and how I've been able to save 25% of my income or mostly put myself through college. So remember that I'm also like, I am not, I don't have like my parents credit card where I'm spending money on their card. All the money I spend is my money and money that I had to work for or whatever the circumstances were. If I saved 25% of my income, why can't I do quick math right here? The rest of whatever that income was. What I'm trying to say is that I don't have a job just for spending money. I have a job to pay for my groceries, pay for my car, my gas, whatever it is. So I've taken a lot of thought here giving advice for someone who doesn't know the value of money or doesn't work for their own money or spending somebody else's money that's not theirs. I'm really coming from a place of understanding of what it means to be in college. Not necessarily that everyone has this experience, but I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of people put themselves through college. I know a lot of people have work through college. Basically, I want to say that within, I think, last not this past summer, but last year, I paid off $32,000. None of this had interest, but it was $32,000 that I knew I had to pay off. And that was the very first thing that I knew I needed to do. We'll get into that in a minute, but I am... Um, I guess we're in the episode already. (laughs) So if I'm going to give you a short overview, we're going to be talking about how to save money, strategies I use, what I do about food and keeping myself nourished when it comes to money, how I'm mindful, tips. Growing up, my family did not have a lot of money. And I this impacted me quite a lot, actually, because I knew we didn't have a lot of money. And I don't think kids should know that, but my parents didn't like go out and tell us oh my god we're poor I just kind of figured it out on my own 
And my parents really, I think they tried their the best that they could in that moment to really give us what we needed in terms of quality of financial life. So I was in competitive gymnastics, which is extremely expensive. My aunt put us through private school, but I did grow up knowing when we went out to dinner, I would only get an entree and I didn't get the most expensive thing. We shopped at secondhand stores or Ross for school shopping or I got hand-me-downs. I didn't get to pick what type of shoes I got or the newest clothing brand. Um, I got my first job and I'm not saying this all to make you feel bad because I've learned a lot about my character growing up with not a lot of abundance and I've learned a minimalistic mindset. But I'm I'm sharing this to tell you that even if my life looks luxurious, which I know it does sometimes, it's it's really fake. I didn't grow up like this and currently I feel like I'm living this fake life because I've I've really figured out how to spend my money in the best way. There's also a part of me because I went to private school for a really long time. I felt like I had to keep up with this unattainable consumer's mindset. There was this girl who really thought everybody was copying her because she wore Brandy Melville. And if you know Brandy Melville, everybody has it. But she thought that everybody was copying her because she would buy the newest thing that just came out. And then me or like some of my friends who we had a job and we had to save up for anything we wanted, we weren't able to get it right away because we had to find the item and then avidly save for it. So we got it. Even if we liked it too, at the same time, we had to wait a couple weeks for our paychecks to come in to buy it. So this girl always thought everybody was copying her, but really most people didn't have their parents' credit cards. Actually, I think most people did have their parents' credit cards, but her family was very lenient on whatever she wanted to buy, which is totally fine. They had the means for that, but she didn't understand that some of us had to wait in a snapshot order something in our sleep as someone who doesn't have doesn't come from money it's it is hard to be in that space with people who constantly are purchasing items i didn't always have the best spending habits though first i want to talk about how i really like i got into liking saving money basically as a kid any money i got mainly cash I had this first I had a wallet that had multiple sections and then any cash I got I put sticky notes on them and I labeled them and then I would split up all my money for like nails clothes shoes makeup whatever it was as little kid that I wanted I would split it up categorize all my money every single time I got money and then I bumped it up into getting these like ziploc baggies they were all labeled those so cute until finally I figured out that if I did this like on a spreadsheet it would be so much easier and like I could track my money better with using like a debit card versus using cash because it was really complicating growing up in private schools and being Even like where I'm at now, I'm constantly surrounded by people who grew up with a ton of money and I found it hard to relate or be able to keep up in a sense. If I don't want to go out to dinner, they try to tell me every reason why I should. If I'm not buying the latest thing like them, like I feel like I'm not dressed, I'm not on trend enough for them or whatever it is. I've always kind of had that mindset since I was a little kid. I remember the first time I got Abercrombie jeans and I definitely didn't. I think I got the second hand too. I felt so cool in school and I wore those jeans like every single day and I wore them in front of this girl was very, very wealthy. But we knew that because her dad played in the NFL. I remember her complimenting me on my jeans and I got so happy inside. And I was probably in third, fourth grade or something. I vividly remember that in the snack line at school. Let's go into ways you can make money and then we'll go into ways you can save money. So firstly is you can probably have a part-time job in college. It's, It's so doable. I've always had a job since I was 15 on. So when I got my first job, I worked for a friend's parents company and I was just like an assistant. I did filing and stuff like that. And ever since then, I've had to pay for a lot of things on my own. So I bought my own car, my own laptop, my about three dogs, always paid for like my deodorants, my shampoos, anything that was not basically food. 
I paid for the majority. Like, obviously, my parents every once in a while would buy, like, clothes or, like, stuff like that. But on the day-to-day or even, like, week-to-week stuff, it was all on me. I just want to say, so my first job in college was I did the groceries where you, like, go shop for people. And then I also worked at a COVID site on campus. And I got paid, I got paid pretty well because... I was putting myself at risk. Not really. When it comes to finding a job, I would look on campus for jobs if you don't have a car. Look for jobs in the surrounding area if you do have a car. You can definitely find a part-time job, whether it's working two to three days a week or more. And most places in college areas are pretty accommodating to your schedule. If not, you have Saturday and Sunday to work or even Fridays because most colleges you don't have classes on Fridays you most likely can work Friday Saturday Sunday yes I know that's your weekend from school you need to make money at the same time you gotta gotta have some type of income when finding a job I'd really weigh out the experience you're getting for like your resume and your future career versus the price of how much you're going to be paid better yet if they're both like great for your resume and you get paid well like pick that job but like currently I'm not getting paid as much as I would like I'm getting skills that I can put on my resume and that's going to help me to my future career so that was a better opportunity to me than picking a job that maybe paid better but I wouldn't get as much work experience that getting a job while in college really shows you how to manage your time socially with school, socially, academically, and career-wise. I also know that for most majors, like if you're an engineering major, you're gonna get a job probably right out of college. But for other jobs, you really do need work experience because they're gonna pick that person who has the internships, even has like any type of customer service experience versus the person who only went and got their degree and has no work experience. Unless you have connections, they're not going to pick your resume to get past the interview. And I think you get that by putting yourself in a work-like experience. So say, say me, maybe it's not the ideal job. I worked as a pool attendant this past summer and every single time I met somebody I most likely asked what they did for a living because I was working at a five-star resort so they had a lot of money to come there and I wondered what they did and most of the time I would spark up a conversation about how it related to me and how I'm so interested and sometimes that or telling like them telling me to apply when I graduate so that was networking for me and I was learning people skills I was learning customer service, just how to spark up a conversation with any type of person. And you learn valuable skills about yourself, social cues, emotional. I highly recommend people getting a job in college. I know you really want to go to dangers or be able to socialize. And I promise you, you can do that. And you can also meet people at your job. And it doesn't have to be like this big job. You can work at the library. That's why I think working on campus is a great idea if you're a freshman because you can meet so many people that come on campus. Next thing I would do would be to have a side hustle. Lauren Bosick always talks about this. Have a nighttime job. So like being a bartender, a waitress, whatever, cocktail server. And then during the day, work on your side hustle. And I also agree with this to an extent. I would rather probably prioritize my sleep and stuff like that and work during the day and then work on my side hustle side hustle on the weekends. I'm not quite sure. What I'm currently doing is I'm going to school during the day. And I, yeah, I do, I guess, work on my side hustle at night and, or like in the evenings and on the weekends. For side hustles, it's really important because sometimes this can give you a little bit of extra cash flow that you wouldn't have originally to your part-time job. So for instance, this could be social media, getting brand partnerships. This is my side hustle is, I guess I'm a micro-influencer on Instagram, I mean on TikTok because I get paid now. So like you can slowly get like 100 to however, 200, 300, whatever brand deals for posting videos on TikTok. And you really don't have to have a lot of followers to do this. So maybe social media is how you make money. Maybe you do something DIY like crochet or you make stickers on Etsy, dog walking on WAG, maybe you have a blog or something. Whatever your side hustle is, I would hone into it and really work on it day by day. You might make no money for the first five years of your side hustle, but maybe after five years, 
it finally starts to take off and that can become your full-time job if you genuinely enjoy it. Maybe dog walking is not your like end time goal, but it's enough. It can give you a little bit extra cash flow. So either it can be a side hustle that you want to one day turn into a career that you're extremely passionate about, or it could be a side hustle that's just giving you some extra money, help provide to your spending. So some easy ways to make money in college. Some ways that I've made money is selling my old clothes that I don't like anymore. I had a whole process. So I'd go through all my clothes and I would I would uh, pile it with sell or go to Goodwill. And then the sell pile, I, okay, I know a lot of people sell on like Poshmark and stuff like that. But to me, that was way too much work. Instead, I did this whole other process, which I don't really know if it was that much work. I'd go to Crossroads and there was like three in Orange County. So I'd go to each one. And I would also go to Buffalo Exchange. They usually all have like different types of styles in each store. So that's why each store would take a little bit of everything. And I would get some extra money there. Not as much as if you'd sell on Poshmark, but to me, it was less work. So that was an easy way to make money. It's already closed. I wasn't wearing anyways. Next is, like I already said, dog walking. I haven't done dog walking, but I've even, I've literally signed up for WAG, I'm pretty sure. And, but I never did it. But I know a lot of people who have. Maybe it's babysitting. Babysitting pays really well and it's pretty flexible in hours. I used to charge $25 an hour. They were usually babies who would sleep the whole time. And then sometimes parents were awesome and would send me food or I would get to do homework or something. Some people love to thrift and then flip it and sell it for even more, which is super cool, sustainable. Another one is being an assistant. This also could just be like a part-time job, but I found that being an assistant, you can really make sure that you're getting paid what you think you deserve. And I've been an assistant where I run errands or I do filing, I clean pretty much anything that they need. It's a really cool job. I've also cat sit a lot, that app where you buy groceries for people and then you deliver it to their house. So there's a variety of extra ways to make money like Uber and Lyft and all those types of things. So I would look into it if you really did need that extra money because it's out there. Money is ever coming. It's never going to stop coming. And I do have a scarcity mindset, but I want to change it to an abundance mindset because I think more money will come my way when I do have an abundance mindset. Now I'm going to go into ways you can save money since we talked a lot about ways you can make money. One way is if you're in college, there's honestly a lot of grants and scholarships you can pay or you can apply to. So today I found out that the DRC, which is Disabilities Resource Center, gives out a scholarship at my college and will basically pay for your whole college. I just thought it was interesting. Or my college also gives you an extra grant if you take summer classes. So I am taking summer classes and I'm going to get that grant. I think If you do have any type of debt, whether that's school debt or you are getting grants from your school, make sure you are using that money that you're getting to actually pay off school and debt. I know so many people who use that money and buy purses, buy TVs, buy clothes, and they're not actually using that money to pay for school, which accumulates interest. And eventually you're going to regret not using that money you got for free to pay off what was it originally there for. And I think it's hard to get that money and realize that. So I would just be really strict with yourself. Like this money is for school and you shouldn't go to anything else. Another way to save money is a lot of places give student discounts, whether it's a workout place that you like going to. Apple Music gives a student discount. I think maybe like the other TV streaming, maybe like Hulu, Netflix, those types of places maybe do. If you're an avid reader, sometimes it can get super expensive to constantly be buying books. And I probably need to do this. My aunt told me about this, but you can get a library card at your local library and then get free audiobooks or ebooks, which is what I do. I get Kindles. And then also you could just go to the library and get like a legit book if you like reading real books. You don't have to go and buy the book. Another thing is Groupon. I used to make a spreadsheet of every workout class Groupon had and all the different prices on their website and on the Groupon and tried to find the best deals and I did. And then the next is a lot of places give free trials, whether it's a workout place, a food company. I would not just buy the first thing you see. Really take an account 
everything that you're purchasing, even if it's a little subscription, and try to find a little bit of a cheaper option. Maybe you're saving $5 a month, but that adds up to $60 a month. Just be a little bit more mindful. You can end up saving yourself a pretty decent amount of money in the end when you look at it all. Now we're going to go into some strategies that I have figured out in order to save money. Some of these I use all the time, some of these I've tried, but overall, I think any way to try and save money will always be beneficial. Okay, this one I saw on TikTok is get a small calendar, pin it to your wall where you'll see it every single day, and for the days, you'll have green days and you'll have red days, and you decide what is necessary or what are essential items that you have to buy and what are non-essential items. Essential items are anything for my dog, birthdays, and groceries. And then non-essential items are eating out, getting coffee, my parking, um, I'm trying to think what else, or like shopping. So really anything you probably didn't need or could have avoided. So if, okay, let's say it's April 30th, I went to go get a matcha. I would then color in that whole day red and I would write on the calendar of that day what I bought. But if I don't buy anything or I buy something that's essential, then I'll color in that day green. So then you have a visual representation every single day of if you're spending money or not and it's right in your face. What I also liked about this is I can then see if there's a pattern of certain days that I spend more money on and I can take in the whole month. It also motivated me to not spend money throughout the week because I would consciously know I want to color in this day green so I shouldn't buy this last month. Another one that I use every single month, I've done this for the past three years and this is how I know I've saved 25% of my income this year is I do a monthly budget spreadsheet. I go on Google, Google like the Google Sheets so it's saved. So for like my house, utilities, my car, my dog, shopping, eating out, groceries. So anything I've ever spent money on, it has a category. And at the end of the month, I go through my debit card and my credit card, even my Amazon and Target purchases so I can put them in the correct spots for like what I purchased there. Then I input every single charge. Oh, I also go through my Venmo, but then I put every single charge into the correct category and I look through it and I highlight whatever is above normal. So usually what's above normal for me is my gas, my groceries, and sometimes shopping or my dog. And so if I highlight it red, then I know for the next month I need to be more mindful in that category. And I also will put little notes like of why, like for Halloween, I spent more money because I was buying coffee costumes or for my dog if it was high it's usually because I paid for training classes for that month. So not only do I put in what I've purchased throughout the month but I put in all my monthly income and then I subtract them all by each other and then I look at my remainder and my remainder must be positive because if it's not positive that means I spent more money that month than I made. I'm usually positive (laughs) thankfully. When I go through every single purchase, it makes me realize how compounded purchases get. Because maybe going to a coffee shop and getting a $5 coffee is nothing. But then at the end of the month, if you got five coffees, or maybe you got a coffee four times a week, every single week. Looking at how much everything compounds, it makes me realize how much one meal out. Because I can only eat out so many times before it's 100 plus in that category. And for me, eating out is not a priority because I would rather spend that money on groceries when that $100 could have lasted me a week of food. So I try to think of it in that way. And same goes with shopping. Shopping is a bit more difficult for me because usually articles of clothing are usually 100 plus dollars and then that looks a bit absurd at the end of the month. Oh, one thing I do when it comes to clothes is I try to do like after pay or I would only do this if you actually have the money. I, I don't do this because I don't have the money at the time. I just 
want my monthly payment not to look like I spent $600. Like, okay, for instance, let's say I was buying Apple headphones. I'm pretty sure there are $600. So if I was buying that, I wouldn't really necessarily want that on my budget report. So I'd rather have it charge me every two weeks and split up the charges. So it split up how much I spent on shopping within the last two to three months. And only do this if you actually have the money. I just do this because it makes me feel better at the end of the month. Okay, so another thing is I do my finances with my sister every single month. She does a little side hustle of helping people invest. I We invest with Robinhood and I mostly, I have a bit of, what's it called? Like the, the money that's not really money, like Bitcoin or whatever. I don't have, I do actually have Bitcoin, but whatever, that fake money. (laughs) So I I have a little bit invested in whatever that type of money is called. But then I have a lot of those, I think they're called venture uh, capitals. I feel like that's the wrong word. I'm not the girl to tell you what to invest in, but basically at the end of the month, whatever's remaining, my sister helps me pick different companies and stocks to purchase. Then I'm not just having all my money just sit in my bank account and not grow so if I invest it at least I know it can grow and make me more money and none of this money I'm investing I have any plan to take out I'm going to keep it in there for the next 20 30 40 years okay maybe not 40 maybe I'm 20 so maybe the next 20 years and that's the plan those are both ways that I try to visually see if I'm spending money and know at the end of the month exactly how much I'm spending versus saving and I've really loved investing. It's actually so much fun and I love doing my budget report. At the end of the month, I always look forward to doing it. Tomorrow is May 1st, so I'm super excited to do my April and I usually set goals for myself like you need to save this X amount of dollars or you need to get below this in this category because you were over last month. Then I also use this to plan if I want to travel. So last year I went to France and over the course of a couple of months, I saved three grand so I could go on this trip. It also kind of gives you a goal if you're working towards something with that money you're saving. Another way that I save money with when it comes to groceries and food, because it can be so expensive, simplify the ways that I get food, if that makes sense. So Thrive Market, I've really liked because I can put in that I'm gluten-free, any type of like health concerns that I like. So whether it's preservative-free, gum-free, oil-free, whatever it is that you're really passionate about. So I usually do like organic too is you click all those boxes and then it gives you every type of food or grocery item that they have and then I'm only shopping through those items and what I've also really liked is it tells you exactly how much you're saving and for a moment I was like "Mm, am I really saving that much money but then I went to the regular grocery store and compared prices so I know that they're not saying you're saving money you actually are maybe the knockoff brands at Trader Joe's might be cheaper but sometimes it's just more convenient for me to get my groceries sent to my house so I'm saving money with gas I'm saving time at the grocery store and then I'm going to the grocery store for things I only really need which is usually produce or the snacks that they don't have on Thrive Market so I really loved that and then I love meal kits so when it comes to free trials meal kits are your best friend so if you have a kitchen I would highly recommend this most meal kit companies 80% of them within the past two years and then my parents also did it when I was in high school but basically I tried every free trial and you get a discount whether it's free meals or half off whatever it is and I tried every single one because of the discounted price and then also I wanted to find my favorite meal kit which I did sun baskets my favorite it is the most expensive one so maybe that's not way to save money but for me the quality of their food is so much better than the other meal kit for this meal kit they tell you how much everything is so I never pick the most expensive meal I always pick I always try to stay under a certain amount each week and also with this is when I make meals for one one person and I would go to Trader Joe's and like pick out all the ingredients and then make the meal I would usually be wasting money because I wouldn't use all the ingredients 
I would go to the grocery store and forget half of the ingredients and then my meal wasn't good and I didn't enjoy it. So for this, it gives me the exact amount of ingredients and it makes it for two servings. So I usually eat it for dinner and then I eat it for lunch the next day. So that's more convenient for me. I know that's not the most affordable thing, but that's how I've kind of justified the saving money portion is not buying extra ingredients, actually making sure I'm eating everything and spending less time in the grocery store and having to go back and forth if I forgot something. And then also I'm making my palette of food extremely large because I'm trying a new food multiple times a week versus when I used to only eat the same things every day. Here are some additional ways that I'm mindful with my money. Somehow, I feel like I never spend money on myself for like materialistic things. But then I do my purchases at the end of the month and I'm like, where the heck did all my money go? And I even, I'm pretty good with my money and I still think this. But I realize that it's mostly for my dog or I love buying things for other people. Sometimes it gets the best of me. And then also I buy a lot of things from Amazon that I don't necessarily in me need but I still sometimes buy. I bought a lot of supplements recently. I buy a lot of books. I think with social media we've become much more consuming of products. This is because when I watch Instagram or TikToks people are like this is what you need to buy. Here's a haul of everything you need to buy. My Amazon storefront and people are just constantly buying things over and over that they don't really need. You just think you want in the moment honestly over consuming I don't have the space for it I don't want to move it when I move out and it just I don't need all those knickknacks I don't need all those clothes I've learned to live minimalistic last year I lived in an eight by nine foot room door didn't even open all the way because my bed like I had a twin bed and it didn't open all the way and I've just learned how to really make my space work for less things my closet, my roommates make fun of me because I have no clothes. I wear pretty much the same thing every day, sweats and sweatshirts, so why do I need more clothes and workout clothes? When it comes to eating out, I really try not to eat out. I probably eat out every other week, like once. I try to make the most of those eating out experiences. So yesterday, I got a salad at this market. It was not good, so I was kind of bummed, but I was with a group of people, and I don't, like, I'm not going to make everybody else's life inconvenient. I guess I have, like, kind of a role of eating out and not liking my food. That's why when when it's eating out on my terms, I like to go somewhere that I know that I like every single time. There's this breakfast place that I, and I get the same thing every time because I like eating I like to know that my money that I'm spending is worth it. Another way that I am more mindful with the things that I spend money on, I have a running list of things I want for my birthday, for Christmas, or anniversaries. And instead of buying anything I want immediately, usually there's some type of holiday coming up for me. So like this month is going to be my birthday. So I really shouldn't buy anything for myself because I know I can just ask for it for my birthday. So I feel like at the moment I have a lot of things I want and I don't know what I want for my birthday yet because the two things I do kind of want are like extremely expensive and I don't want to ask for that. Um, But then I also might just ask for like travel money or something. I think people spend way like they buy a lot of things for themselves and then when birthdays or Christmases come up, you don't know either what to ask for or you're just asking for things that are unnecessary. For me, my birthday and Christmas are six months apart, so it kind of works well. And then like all the other little holidays are right next to each other, like with my boyfriend. So okay, here are my last couple tips. First is if you have any type of debt or whether it's maybe it's not even debt yet, but school, a car payment, You should pay those things off as soon as possible. They usually accumulate interest. I promise you in a couple of years and you're still paying that off, you're going to wish you started it a little bit earlier. It could be 50 to 100 bucks a month. I started paying off my car payment 200 bucks a month and if I made extra money, I would send even more in and I paid off my car. I think I got it when I was 17 and I paid it off when I was 19, I think. So I paid my car off in two years, I think, which is pretty good. And then if you have a credit card, really, really try to not spend money if you actually don't have it. I haven't invested in the past couple of months, so I have enough money in my checkings to just use my credit card without looking. Once I invest at the end of this month, I'm not going to be able to do that. I can't just use my credit card and expect it 
it to come out of my bank account and have that money. Like, also, just don't buy purchases that you know you can't afford. Also, make sure your credit card is on automatic payment because you don't want to get late fees or whatever the interest is. It's just easier if you don't even have to think about it and it does it for you. When buying anything, think to yourself, am I obsessed with this? And also, don't buy things that don't look good on you. Buy what looks good on you. Just because it's trendy doesn't mean you should get it. Also, another thing that I do is when I see an item and I'm like maybe kind of questioning if I like it, I think to myself, if I saw this at Walmart or Forever 21 or whatever store that you don't like, would I buy this? And usually, no. Just because, maybe it's because I saw it at a store I really like, like for Love and Lemons or anthropology just because it's from there I think I like it but really I don't I've convinced myself lastly is I think to myself will I wear this in five years taking account the trend that it is and the quality so most of my clothes are not colored because I realize that anything that's patterned or colored I usually don't like within the next couple years and then I also think about the quality favorite workout sets I've had for five years five years I have gone through multiple sizes and weights and heights and workouts i've done the most intense workouts and these workouts still clothes still fit me and they still look great so to myself i think should i buy a workout set from amazon i don't know i've only had them a year so i don't know like how good the quality is but i think to myself would i rather buy a workout set from amazon or one from set active or aloe that i've had for five plus years and know that they stay good and usually Yes, I have to drop a little bit of a bag at first, but they're going to last me for five plus years and that's way more important. So that goes into invest in quality versus quantity. That's the same thing with my workout sets. I don't have a ton of workout sets, but they're such good quality and I wear them all the time and I would invest in like less patterns and colors because in five years, those colors and patterns probably won't be in anymore or like more basic stuff. For jewelry, I used to always buy like pretty cheap jewelry and then just replace it every couple months, but that ends up being more expensive than paying for the real gold necklace that's maybe $200 you're going to keep for a couple of years before it breaks and you never have to take it off and it never tarnishes and it's just such great quality. So I'd rather buy, I'd rather spend a little bit more money in one instance than having to compound a lot of money. Here's some like three random ways that I also save money is I usually walk or you can bike instead of paying for parking because my college town, there's like a downtown and I swear I always get a parking ticket and I found like a park that doesn't, you don't have to pay for parking and it's like a five minute walk. So I just don't understand why I would unnecessarily pay for a parking like meter and then also possibly get a ticket if I didn't like put extra money in that meter. So really try to walk places that are walkable for you. Like five minutes is nothing. Maybe even up to half an hour. People that live in New York walk 10 miles a day. So I don't know why when it comes to California, we just, obviously it's, if it's not safe, then drive. Another thing is I always pick the cheapest flights or whenever it comes to traveling, I never pick the most expensive thing. I'm 20 years old in college. There's no reason why I need to be traveling as if I'm luxurious with my parents, you know? So And it's also you're traveling for experience. It's not necessarily a vacation for me. Like I just want to experience the world and cultures and languages and food. I'd rather spend less money on traveling, more money on like the time that I'm there and less money on maybe like the quality of my flight or hotel or whatever it is. And then another thing is ever since I came to college, I stopped getting my nails done. If I'm pretty sure when I calculated it, I was spending $1,200 or more a year on getting my nails done. I don't need to get my nails done. I just need to keep them manicured and it's also a lot of time to go to the nail salon every two weeks and maybe that's the same with your hair or your eyelashes i used to get my eyelashes permed the only thing i really do spend money on when it comes to self-care is i get facials almost every single month but for me that's preventative because i want to look good when i'm older and i do have acne so it helps clear up my skin i rather spend money on facials and makeup also that can go the same thing with hair maybe stop dyeing your hair go back to your natural roots and then just get trims every once in a while but or do something that's low maintenance i think figure out what is important to you when it comes to spending money and really hone in on that like i already said my dog groceries and gas actually gas and then traveling are like the most important things to me when i spend money so maybe for you it 
your nails, eating out, and whatever. I don't know. Like, I love spending money on workout classes, too. So, figure out what you value and what's important to you when you spend money. And then, make sure everything else. You just don't spend as much money on the other things. You don't need to spend money on everything. Okay, that is pretty much the entire episode. I hope maybe you learned one or two things on ways that you can save money or make money. This is just everything that I've really taken into account the past. And I think making and taking, having financial literacy, listening to podcasts, reading books about finances can give you that freedom that maybe you've never had before, give you some sense of intelligence in that way as well. It can be very interesting and I think some people are just too afraid of finances when it can give you a lot of freedom, like I already said. But I hope you liked today's episode. I'll see you next week. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Instagram is my perspective pod and TikTok is just my name. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later.